Okay, so the final topic in this add-on uh, section is generalized linear models. So we've seen that linear regression is used for a quantitative response. Logistic regression is the counterpart for a binary response and models the logit of the probability as a linear model. So these are two response types, but others exist, such as non-negative responses, skewed distributions, and more. So generalized linear models provide a unified framework for dealing with many different response types. And so that's what we're going to talk about here. We're going to go through a simple example, which is going to illustrate an important member of this family, which uses Poisson regression. And for that, we're going to use the bike share data, which is a data set that measures some variables for bike rental company in Washington, DC. So in this case, the response is bikers, which is the number of hourly users in the bike share program in Washington, DC. You've got a bunch of variables. You've got the temperature, whether or not it's a, a working day, the weather situation, whether it's cloudy, misty, light rain, snow, there's a base level for weather, which is clear. And then two other variables with lots of levels, which we haven't put in this kind of a NOVA plot, which is the month of the year. And we actually plot in their coefficients just as a function of month. And the hour of the day is 24 hours of the day. And so we plot each hour as a point here. But ideally, these all belong in this table. We just fit a linear regression model. We show the coefficients, the standard, just the usual stuff. It looks like everything's significant. It's a, a quite a large data set. And we can see from the month figure that uh, there's more bicycles rented in May and June. Then during the hot months in DC, there's fewer. Then in the fall, more again. And of course, in the winter, very few. And then hour of the day, there's a natural kind of partition as well more rented at the beginning of the workday, at the end of the workday, because people use it as a, a means of public transport, and then different amounts during the day. There's a lunchtime period as well. So that's fine, but the response is the number of hourly users, okay? So the number of hourly users, first of all, it's a non-negative variable. And here we've shown a, a picture just of, of the, the response versus hour of the day. And we've put a smoothing spline fit through this just so that you can see as just for the single variable what the mean looks like as a function of hour of the day. And what you see is that when the mean is low, the spread is, is somewhat low. But when the mean is higher, the spread seems to get bigger. Right? So that for the most part, the variance seems to increase with the mean. Now, when we fit linear regression models, we, we're really assuming that the variance of y is constant. Okay, this is just showing one variable, but if you fit the full linear model like we did before, 10% of the linear model predictions are negative because there's no constraints on the linear model that the predictions should be positive, even though the response is always positive. In the cases like this, you might be tempted to rather model the log of the bikers, the counts of bikers, but it has its own problems. Example, predictions are on the wrong scale because you really want to make predictions on the bikes number of biker scale, not on the log scale. And some of the counts could be zero, and so you can't take logs. So that's not, in general, a good solution. Here's a picture of, of the log of the bikers and uh, with the same, a, a similar smooth curve put through. It seems like the variance is, is more stable on the log scale as a function of the mean. But there's some weird stuff going on down here when we're taking logs of, of small counts. And for the zeros, well, these are logs of those zeros, so these must be the ones, but any zero counts were either left out or some fudging had to be done. So this is where the Poisson model comes in. So just like we use the binomial model for zero one data, turns out the Poisson regression or the Poisson distribution is good for modeling counts. So for those who are interested, this is the form for the Poisson probability mass function. So it gives an explicit form for the probability that y equals k, and it's controlled by a parameter lambda, which is the mean count in the distribution. And for the Poisson, it turns out that the variance is equal to the mean. So when the mean's higher, the variance is higher. So that's a property of the Poisson distribution. By the way, for the binomial distribution, 
the variance also depends on the mean. If for a binomial distribution, if the mean is p, then the variance is p times 1 minus p for the Bernoulli distribution. And that tends to be a property of this class of GLMs that we're talking about, except for the Gaussian. Okay, so this is just for a single Poisson distribution, but we're interested in a Poisson distribution where the mean changes with the covariates. So now, instead of just writing lambda, we're going to write lambda as a function of x. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the log of lambda is a linear function of x. So just like for the logistic regression, we assume the logit of the probability was a function of x. Here we're assuming the log of the mean is a, a function of x. Or you can invert that transformation and it says that lambda is e to the linear combination of the coordinates of x. So you can see that automatically guarantees that the mean is positive in this case. We can fit this model and we fit it by maximum likelihood. We're not going to go into the details, but we use a Poisson as a basis for the fitting. And we can fit that model and get a summary. And just like we did for logistic regression and for linear regression, you get a summary that identifies the coefficients for each variable and gets standard errors and p-values and so on. And so this is very similar. You'll see these coefficients are different because these are on the log scale than for the linear model, but they're going to have a similar message. But the nice thing is that when you fit this Poisson model, it takes this change in variance into account when it does a fit in. And again, we just show as dot plots the effects estimated for month and for hour. And if you, if you compare back, you'll see they're somewhat similar. It turns out in this case, the variance is actually somewhat larger than the mean. For the Poisson, we're assuming the variance is the same as the mean. And, but this is a well-known situation when you fit Poisson data, and it's known as over-dispersion. So the p-values are misleadingly small in this, in this plot, in this table here, and, but you can get corrected p-values by accommodating this over-dispersion, but we don't go into that yet. So we've covered three generalized linear models in this course, Gaussian, binomial, and now Poisson. So they each have a characteristic link function. This is the transformation of the mean that is represented by a linear model. And we write it like this, eta, as the link function of the mean. And it's the transformation of the mean that's a linear model. So the link, link functions for linear, logistic, and Poisson regression are, for the linear model, it's just the identity link. It just uses the, say, the model of mean directly. For logistic regression, it's a logit link. Because in logistic regression, the mean for the binomial is the probability. And for Poisson, it's the log link. And how do you decide which, which of these models to use? Well, it's, um, it's the nature of the response row. So for Poisson, the, the, the response are these counts. And so we decide that we need a, a distribution that's suitable for counts. For binary data, it, it's, you know, Bernoulli is pretty much the only distribution. Because if it's a quantitative variable, we will just use Gaussian if it, if it looks like, um, you know, if it's got a nice symmetric distribution. Turns out they also have characteristic variance functions. And we talked about that. The variance for the Poisson is equal to the mean. Then the models are fit by maximum likelihood. And summaries like the ones we showed are produced by the GLM function in R. And the other GLMs that we haven't talked about include the gamma distribution, a negative binomial, which is, it's, despite the name, is actually used in the case of counts, but when you've got extra um, over-dispersion, there's also the inverse Gaussian distribution. The gamma distribution is often used when you've got positive observations uh, or non-negative observations, and you've got long tails to the right. The gamma is often used. And there's more. So, you know, so this, the GLMs are quite a big family. I, we've just told you about the more important ones.